All right, um, let's do this. Today's topic. Um, if you guys have never uh, been with Sarah before, you should know Sarah is really all things marketing uh, at Kaplan for us. And so it comes with a wealth of experience, wealth of knowledge. And we ask her to come in and share it with our Dearborn partners, kind of what's working, what's not. We have some kind of some quick hitter wins that you can get, you know, the power of short-term marketing for quick results. And believe me, in a down market like we're in right now, people need as many quick results as we can get. And um, But I think, Sarah, uh, one thing I think you say, uh, and I'm sure we're going to hear it again, is um, uh, quick results, but uh, not short term, right? I mean, th these are long term strategies, but you can do these for quick results. Right, right. I think, yeah, the key is is short term there to drive urgency, you know, get get marketing tactics out the door. But um, we'll talk a little bit more towards the end. It's long term focus is where we, you need to spend most of your time. Long term focus. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Um, all right. So let's do this. The first thing I have is I have a poll question. Uh, Sarah, do you have polls on your um, board for some reason I don't have our poll oh here we go found it never mind okay all right here we go everybody you're gonna get a chance to play along before we play just because we do this every time we ask okay who are you what's your role at your uh, school if you would please take a look at this these are um, anonymous did it launch for everybody just had it is it up I see it on my end oh yeah there it is very good yeah. a little delay on my end I'm a, we're figuring it out though uh, all right, everybody, go ahead and take a quick second, just so we can kind of gear the uh, conversation around uh, the people who are in the audience today. And you're all going to get a chance to play along. You're all going to get a chance to text. Once again, our polls are anonymous. Nobody sees what you answered uh, in the polls, um, but your chats have your name on it. So um, uh, we can definitely talk to you by name in the chat. So, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to end the poll. Uh, and not surprisingly, we have a lot of owner operators on here today. So let's do this. I'll share the results. Look at 78% owner operator, administrator, 22%, instructor, 56%. You are able to answer more than one on these. Uh, and then we don't have anybody who's currently not a school yet. This is like the first time in a while. Well, it tells you uh, we are in kind of a tough marketplace. We do see some positive things coming for next year, actually even later this fall as interest rates continue to, to, to drop and as transaction amounts to start to go up. Uh, so we're kind of excited. And I think what you're going to get today, everybody, is you're going to get uh, Sarah and you're going to get some real knowledge that you can apply to your business today and be prepared as this market turns and as it shifts and as people, we get through the commission, you know, uh, settlement cases and how would people have to change their business. Once we get through that and people realize real estate's here and it's here to stay and everything is good, your business can be in a great spot, in a great spot. All right. So let's do this. Let's jump in. Okay, Sarah. Okay. We have one uh, more poll question about oh. your, your yes. It's just to kind of get a sense of who handles your marketing strategy and execution for your schools. Um, so Toby, if you want to, yeah, this is that one. Sarah asked to make sure that we ask this so that she can gear exactly how she's talking about it too. So uh, let's do this, everybody. One more poll, real quick, and this helps a ton for us. So we've just launched it. Answer this poll. Uh, so what we know, Sarah, in the first one is we have a lot of owner operators. We have a lot of administrators on. So I'm imagining these administrators are and operators are people doing a lot of this uh, uh, marketing work. So. All right, uh, let's do this. Uh, everybody see the poll? Can you see the poll? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. I'm still waiting for it to pop up on my end, uh, which is a little bit of a delay, which is kind of funky, but um, all right, there it is. All right, I think we've got everybody in. Everybody's voted. I'm going to go ahead and stop this poll in three, two, one, done. Share the results. Once again, I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> a lot of people weren't. You called it. <laughs> 63%. Yep. Like I have an internal marketing team. Look at you, 13%. Good for you. Hopefully you're going to be able to, oh, by the way, uh, this is going to be about another 30 minutes, 35 minutes long. And uh, if for any reason you got to go, we will send out the video next week and you can share the video with your team. So if you've got an internal marketing team, you're like, you should see what they did, uh, what Sarah Scobie did uh, on this Dearborn Partner webinar. You can do that. You guys can share that. Uh, mix, uh, I use a mixture of internal and, uh, and external, another 13%. And then I don't have a marketing strategy. Well, you're in the right place. So if you're going to start, Sarah's going to help you. All right. For let's sure. do it. Okay. 
Awesome. Okay. So I, you know, I, I split this into kind of two, two areas to discuss. We'll definitely get into some tactical ideas towards the end, but I wanted to take a step back and think about um, finding efficiencies and some productivity to allow us to free up time to just get marketing out there. Sometimes that's half the battle, especially if you're in that jack of all trades. It's just finding the time to get marketing in the pipeline. Um, so one thing I wanted to spend a few minutes on was just messaging alignment. Um, if you can align your messaging consistently across all of your marketing channels and, and, and your website, it's not only going to be more effective, but you're going to be ahead of the game when you want to get something out there. Um, so I just put together a quick little, um, you can call this a messaging positioning framework, a creative brief, however you want to approach your messaging. But it's really important to understand what your key message is, why it matters, and then build messaging pillars to support that key message. Um, this could be focusing on your school. It could be for a specific campaign. You could even get down to a specific product level. Um, I, I would definitely encourage you to at least have this for your school. Um, because that way, again, you're going to have this messaging, you're going to be able to pull from it to um, be consistent through all of your marketing channels. Um, so always start with a key strategy statement. Again, this is your why. Um, I just pulled some of these examples from various real estate education. This is not some Kaplan secret sauce you're getting here. It's from various websites. Um, so just walk through an example, um, kind of a pyramid example here. So the key message is we support you in navigating your licensing education from start to finish. This, this, um, is, their, this is their big messaging strategy statement. Why are right. we different, right? Why is our school? Why is this campaign or why is this product? It could be right. any one of the three, right? Or Right. Yeah, you could, I, I, as again, I would encourage you to at least have it for your school. Why should someone come to your school? And then you can get even more granular from there and build another one for a specific campaign. You know you're going to have, especially if it's evergreen. Um, so always start with your why. What is your biggest value prop? Then build your messaging pillars beyond that and then prove points to those messaging pillars. Sarah, how long should that messaging statement be? I mean, because I, because man, I can write some run on sentences. And so I have it, you, you see it. So I write stuff to Sarah all the time. She probably just rolls her eyes like, oh, here he goes again. Cause it's, it's really long. And I'm like, this, it's all so important, but really when I'm looking at a marketing piece and I want to, because some people would talk, well, what's your mission statement? This is a little different than a mission statement, right? right. I mean, right. A mission statement will drive kind of the direction of your messaging, I would imagine. Yeah, your your key message, your, your key message, your value prop should be short. So right. think this framework, keep it short. If you want to then take these key pillars and proof points and build out a more full form email, you just, you need someplace to start. Having a messaging statement here is gonna give you the tools you need to then go write the marketing copy beyond that. Um, so start with your key messaging statement, build your pillars. I just picked a couple, tailor your education the way you want, invest in class instructors. And then what are the proof points? What are the things that you are bringing to the table, whether it's with your education, with your school, that support um, how you tailor the education the way you want? Um, I just pulled three there. You have recommended paths to success, track progress through your course, and then, you know, going to the other side, best in class instructors. Well, what about them? Why do I care? Because they're practicing agents, they're local, they have presentation skills and the ability to make learning fun. That is why someone should come to your school. Someone should take your class. Um, so, so pillar one, it, the pillar statement essentially is tailor your education the way you want. And then your proof points are those bullets underneath, right? Correct. So I'm I'm doing yeah. at least three proof points. Maybe there's two, but but it, it carries the conversation and helps you kind of organize. I'll tell you what, I think about this. It's super important uh, for us. Uh, we don't even build a course. We don't even build a package unless we know how we're going to market it. And then the, and the marketing drives off of, and Sarah, uh, you know, team reminds me all the time is, does, is it supported by a pillar? It, which pillar does this fall under? It helps you sort of organize too how you're going to market it, how you're going to release the product and how, who are you trying to reach? And are you actually delivering something of value? How many pillars should, should somebody have? Should there, cause you could have, I got 12 pillars. I, I, three, maybe four. You, it doesn't need to be, cause you're not going to be pulling every single pillar into every single marketing piece. Oh, sure. You're going to be taking the ones that you're going to pull in for to fit a specific campaign or a product. For instance, the, the message is the, 
the, the key is to have it use it consistently through all of your marketing channels. So whatever, if you want to talk about your instructors and your emails, because that's what you want to hit on, if you're sending them to a landing page, your landing page needs to talk about your instructors. There's going to be a disconnect between those two. And in some channels, it could hurt you if you're doing digital marketing and there you, you talk about instructors in an ad and they go to a page that doesn't have an ad, your, your return is going to be very low. Well, it's one of those things you said at the very beginning, and uh, and I know we got to kind of keep cruising along here, but um, make sure your messaging lines up. Uh, meaning, you, you can have too many messages in the marketplace. You can have you could confuse people. I've seen you got great ideas, right? But if you can't boil it down to some some these are the three or four most important pillars that I want to support. And every bit of marketing you do needs to, if it's if it's within this pillar, you should be driving to a spot, right? That that echoes that, that is really all about that. And you give them more information if you want at that point, once you get them there, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You 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 a framework is essential to be more effective in the long run. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Anything else on uh, um yeah, on. I think we have another poll coming up. I know everyone is probably sick of hearing about AI, but I'm going to spend a few minutes on it because I do think when we talk about productivity and freeing up time to have a tactical focus, AI is going to help you. So just out of curiosity, um, are you guys using any AI tools and applications for any business related task? It doesn't have to be marketing related. It could be, you know, product or, um, you know, however you may use AI today. Got it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. All right. Ready? How often are you using AI tools or applications for business-related tasks? Are you doing a weekly, monthly, rarely, or nah, not at all? I've not even jumped into it yet. Or, or oh my, oh my, I'm I'm pretty out to lunch here. Uh, what is AI? You must be on an island somewhere uh, without uh, communication. And thank you. We will, you know, put a chat message in, and we will send somebody to rescue you if you don't know what AI. Uh, have seen. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll in three, two, one. And I'll share the results. How about this? All right. So even if you haven't uh, done anything, good. not everybody has, right? Uh, and some people maybe never will. Good for you too. But weekly, 33%. Monthly, 11%. Rarely, 22%. Not at all, 33%. Everybody knows what it, that, that, <laughs> that some idea of what AI is. And here's here's an interesting thing I can tell everybody. Um, uh, at Kaplan, uh, we we did not employ AI for content uh, because of the IP intellectual property stuff. We we did not do that r right off the bat. But one of the things we did talk about was what is some content that you can use AI for that is not intellectually uh, protected, that is more public and uh, focused as opposed to um, something that you put a copyright on. Um, and marketing seems to be a pretty big hotbed. Uh, and so let's do this. I'm going to stop the sharing and let's jump in. There we go. Um, um, yeah. So thankfully, everybody knows what AI is. So that's good. And several of you are already using it on a regular basis. And that's great. I hope you're finding that it is making you more productive because that is what I have found. Um, it's really opened up room for just a more tactical, strategic focus in our marketing. Um, there are a number of ways, you know, drop in the chat. However, you're using AI today. I would love to hear it because there are a million different ways um, that that you can use it. But um, things to think about, write, rewrite, or get just get creative juices flowing. I'm a product marketer. I write copy, but I don't consider myself a copywriter. So sometimes I just need a little help to get to get things moving. So um, you, you can use it to help write and craft your copy using that messaging framework. Um, definitely think about... Um, creating review, SEO, optimizing your content. That's huge. Um, you can create some images. I did put a maybe here because it's very dependent and I'll show some of the, the flubs that I encountered as I was creating this PowerPoint um, and doing some testing. Uh, it depends on the platform that you're using because not all platforms are created equal. Some are better for some things than others. Um, and the prompts that you're putting in. I definitely had some fails as I was creating this PowerPoint. Um, videos can do it for videos. Definitely keep those short right now. Anything more than 15-ish seconds, it becomes very apparent that it was created via AI. Um, even data analysis. Um, I know uh, 
the chat GPC, for instance, the paid version, you can upload some of your data to just find out where the trends are without having to do all the manual work yourself. Um, so uh, like I said, not all AI platforms are created equal. Some are better for some things than others. Um, you just kind of have to play around with it um, and see where it's going to help you be more productive. I think that's the key is use it where it's going to help you find those efficiencies um, and not be a time suck, but help in the long run. You know, and I think that's it's super interesting. So, you know, for the previous six months, I, AI is all the rage. It's going to change America. It's going to put millions of people out of work. And and you're starting to see this, this whole kind of pullback on the stock market recently, where AI is like, it's not really uh, saving a ton of money for companies and organizations, which seems logical because they got to gear up for it. People got to get trained on it, all those kind of things. But I can tell you personally, internally at Kaplan, we are finding some efficiencies uh, that help pretty kind of significantly. Um, like I said, if there's an area where you're where you're not strong at, maybe you see if AI can help boost that area. If there's an area you're super strong at, uh, what I've found is you might be even stronger quicker. Like like listing sure. marketing copy piece, like you yep. said. Marketing you know, copy, like even creating this deck. I kind of challenged myself. I attended a webinar recently on, you know, utilizing AI to, to help with creating decks. And I, I, I used it to help take my jumble of, of words of what I wanted to say and create an outline for it. And then I used another tool to, to lift that outline onto this deck and apply a theme. So I, you know, was be able to create my deck very quickly and I could just go in and tweak a few things, change some words, add add some, some flair to it, so yeah. to speak. Um, it's Use it how it makes the most sense that it's going to find your areas of productivity. Yeah. I, I think the, the deal is um, I, I'm starting to use it for the lift. And then I go in and I put my polish on it. So it's like 70 to 75% of the way there, which is a huge lift when you're doing some things. Um, and so, but... Uh, I think the key here, everybody, is uh, people are using it and people are finding some efficiencies. And what I'm really interested in is, does it actually make the finished product better? And uh, uh, or is it just about efficiency? And so that's, I think, where the, that's really where the, the, I think the, uh, the, the jury is still out yet. But I for sure am finding some efficiencies in time. That's where the human aspect comes in to make it better. <laughs> I think so, right? Yep, yep, for sure. Yeah, very good. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, so now we'll kind of get into the tactical focus. Um, you know, so the key here is short term. Like a lot of these tactics are really designed to drive urgency, appeal to those who are on the fence about purchasing from your school, um, especially kind of in the market we're in right now. These might be a little bit more beneficial, but it, again, these are short term tactics. I would not employ these, you know, for a 12 month full, you know, marketing cycle necessarily. Um, obviously, the, you know, very obvious one is discounting tactics. Um, again, when we're thinking about discounting, don't want to have a discount every single month every single week, think of short term discounts just to kind of drive that urgency right now, um, especially in the current market. If you know, when you're get to the cart and you see a discount or a promo code, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to go search if there are any discount or promo codes available for that particular company, especially, you know, in the current market. So um, consider using these rarely. Um, they could be straight promo code discounts on your education, just to percentage or a dollar off. Think early bird discounts for certain courses. If you have a live online class coming up and you want to try to get, you know, people in the door quickly and earlier, do an early bird discount for a short amount of time ahead of the class. Um, a purchase incentive. If you purchase something now, you can get a discount on CE or maybe professional development later on. Um, Sarah, can I just jump in a little bit on, sure. on discounts and promo codes? Because I know a lot of the people uh, that are on here right now have have a business where the you know the majority of the people that come to their education is because that owner, operator, administrator, instructor at the school has relationships with people in their local markets that are recruiting people into the industry, and uh, um, and that's a that's a, a special relationship, right? So, um, and I can tell you kind of a hard learned um, uh, lesson was that. Um, uh, those relationships are golden. And those relationships mean that even though a market is down, 
uh, when the recruiter finds somebody that they're recruiting into the business, like their first bit of coaching mentoring they do is tell that that new agent where to go or that would be agent to, where to go to get their licensing education. And of course, our partners want to be that solution. That's they have those local relationships, right? Uh, some of the big national competitors don't have those local relationships. So they rely heavily on discount promo code. They, they go for the spontaneous purchaser, not the relationship building side. So, so I would use discount and promo codes like very strategically if that's a bit, because what you what I found when when we did run a large discount program for about six months, uh, several years ago. Uh, to kind of see what it meant. We didn't actually increase our enrollments. The same people kept sending their recruits and they just paid less. <laughs> so so be careful about that and make sure that if you do go on that route that you know you're you're supporting what that what that um, product is. because uh, sometimes you got to support it differently if that's the market you want to go into, the discount market. How are you differentiating yourself from anybody else who's doing big discounts uh, in the marketplace? And are you really going to compete on that level? Or are you going to compete through the relationships that you form with your past students? And and uh, uh, and maybe there's, like you said, this purchase incentive. What if the, the incentive was that uh, past students could give out a discount for you to somebody who they like or care or, you know, friends, family, something like that? Um, uh, so... There's a there's a lesson to be made, and like, like I said, I'll just share because I share some facts with you guys. Is that um, just discounting the education didn't actually increase sales over a six month period uh, as far as enrollments go? Not not any sort of statistically significant amount. In fact, you know it, it became a problem because you discounted twenty percent and our sales didn't go up twenty percent, <laughs> and so uh, it, it actually made less money for us. Could be different for you. But just just giving it out there. Yeah, and I think that's why it's a very short term tactic. You also don't want to train your list that to expect a discount. Um, so use them strategically um, for sure. Cool. Okay. Yeah, even even uh, you know short term, like uh, like you said, sometimes there are some that they, they may you know if you do it as a traditional discount, that's true too. I mean, like oh, this is the Labor Day discount. They do this each year. That's the one thing I can guarantee. I mean, but be strategic, I think, is really the big sure. message that I was going to say. So. Yep. Okay. okay. If you want to go to the next slide. Okay. Um, other tactics to think about, a lot of these kind of go into more of that relationship building that Toby was just talking about, for sure. Um, think about utilizing your social media for contests and giveaways, um, not only to increase followers, but get leads onto your um, list. Utilize um, the channels you're already in to try to build um, leads because if you don't have prospects that you're marketing to, you can put all the marketing out there, but but you need the people to market to. Um, so definitely use social media for your lead gen um, student referral pro programs. So we talked about this a little bit already. You have students that have attended your classes. I'm assuming they loved all, every, all the education that they got, and so use them. Give them an incentive to come back maybe for CE, but then give them a reason to go to a, um, a friend or family. Um, to, to refer them with, you know, could be a discount as well to your school. Um, real estate is an agno agnostic industry. So, you know, it, you can come in from almost any industry. Um, and so your students probably know someone who would be a good real estate agent. So make sure you're reaching out to them. Um, package your products together. Um, don't just sell a, you know, a, a live online course, package that with exam prep or professional development, increase your average order value over time. Um, and then utilize partnerships and collaborations. Again, if you have students, especially maybe you have a student who has a great social media following, um, do some sort of, you know, pseudo influencer partnership with them where they're talking about the education they got from your school. Um, you could even offer them a small discount to give out to their followers um, to incentivize them to come to your site. That's something that we, you know, are testing into a little bit now with influencers or whatnot. Um, it's it's decent for website traffic. It's pretty good to increase your followers on your social media as well. So definitely utilize. Um, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if anybody on, I don't have another poll question, but if you wanted to drop in the chat, anybody here actually actively soliciting an influencer, um, somebody within the industry that is recognized as a influencer to, to do any marketing, any partnerships with um, 
or are you anybody creating their own influencer? So, um, well, look at that. There you go. Uh, somebody, uh, <laughs> one Kumar, did you, did you still type in? So uh, he's like, wait a second. I don't oh, know. He's doing his own YouTube channel. Oh, you're doing your own nice. YouTube channel. And that's, and that's a real thing. You know, here's the deal. A lot of, uh, I'll tell you, one of the things we look at is we're looking at our own instructors. Some of our instructors are brilliant uh, and, and, and they have the ability and they have influence in their local markets. You know, do you have already people on staff? Are you that person, right? So Kamara's out there saying, I think I've got a niche. I think I've got a thing. Um, how are you doing it uh, to connect with people, to let them know how, how you're different or uh, that you're bringing value. Um, one thing I would give you just a little, a little warning about, make sure you're not using uh, copyrighted materials from somebody to create videos uh, teaching that education. We just had a problem uh, ourselves with a, a Dearborn partner that had done uh, a whole series and it, it, you gotta be very careful about copyright stuff. So, but you can definitely bring your own uh, uh, juice, your own narc smarts and knowledge and charisma and, uh, uh, and put it out there. Um, and we are seeing some people with real success doing that. I mean, significant success in certain markets where they were the person on the front line and they created some videos and they were the social media, uh, you know, vanguard for their company. And, uh, and they're actually doing really well, really well. Yeah, it's definitely worth testing into, especially if you have previous students who who already have a pretty a pretty decent following. Um, you know, also think about your local brokerages, doing partnerships with them for open houses, referrals from them to which I'm sure a lot of you do already with, you know, just the, the tendency towards relationship building. Um, you know, there's there's definite uh, opportunities um, for partnerships and collaborations, especially at a regional level. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those relationships can be key, especially if you're a, a small to mid-size uh, player. Those relationships can move the needle very quickly, very quickly. All right. Um, and really just one quick, so as I mentioned at the beginning, just do, we can't just focus on short term. I know that's where our head's at right now. We want to get the sales in. Um, but the truth of the matter is now is a start focusing on long-term strategies. Um, so think about, you know, as we get towards the end of the year and if um, interest rates shift or whatever happens with the election, the, the market's going to shift again in one way or another. You need to be focusing on some long-term marketing tactics now to set you up to put you in a good position to handle those shifts. Um, I'm going to drop a registration link um, in the chat. We actually next month have our um, executive director of SEO um, at Kaplan. He's going to tackle kind of search engine optimization, all things best practices, um, which again, these are tactics you need to be looking at and making sure your website is optimized, um, especially with how we know Google changes their algorithm like every other week at this point. Um, he's going to have some great best practices of things you can do now um, to set yourself up, you know, because SEO takes takes time, as I'm sure we all know, you know, three to four months, you can make changes now and you're not going to see those positive returns for several months. So I'm going to drop that link in the chat and um, definitely encourage you to sign up to register for that one. Yeah, right on. Uh, super cool. It's everybody I know on here who runs a school and operates a business has a website. Um, you're going to get some free advice from somebody who does it for uh, tens of millions of dollars uh, uh, of spending a year trying to make sure we're optimizing those websites. You're going to get that uh, on the next Dearborn Partner webinar. So um, look at this. I got Reese talking about, you know, entering into a brokerage and doing the licensing education at the brokerage. Make sure your state allows that first off. Some states don't allow that, Reese, but uh, uh, love the idea. How are you creating deeper relationships with with the local people who are actively recruiting people into the industry. And, and before we, we finish, I just want to, I wanted to ask a question out there uh, to everybody who's attending. What are you seeing uh, in your marketplace for, for uh, real estate? Are you seeing a, a, a bottoming of the real estate market and, and a rising in the market at all? Are you seeing these lower interest rates? moving any transactions in your uh, areas? Are you guys seeing this kind of a little bit of a move? Um, I know that there's the stock market wiggle in the last uh, several uh, days is kind of everybody on pause, but um, I was just at the Inman News Conference and I can tell you that the, the talk there was 
uh, uh, slow slogging uh, unless interest rates continue to drip down. And then since that conference, they've come down almost a half a point. And, uh, and I am seeing transactions up. Uh, we're actually seeing a little blip up in, in uh, uh, interest in real estate uh, as a career again. But more things coming. Uh, if, once again, um, uh, if you're seeing something like that, let us know what you're seeing or if it's down. Uh, would love to see that in the chat real quick. But because, um, like I said, uh, so goes the marketplace, kind of so goes our business uh, in real estate. And, um, and it's really all about the perception of, of real estate and the business. And, and the key, I think, that, that Sarah is bringing for everybody today is um, this, too, will shift like it has throughout the years. And you need to be in the right place at the right time with your, with your messaging and your pillars, right, and making sure they all connect to a nice, clear message when somebody comes. Don't confuse them, right? You don't need too many messages. And and then do you have the right right product for them to buy? And and are you in the right place? Um, and then uh, are you supporting those relationships that are important to your business? Because when it turns, you want to be at the front. Yep, you're going to be ready to go if you have your messaging in place. When it turns, you can just take off running. Yeah, right on. Look at that, Kumar. Thank you for uh, the Tampa, Florida. Slow. A lot of non-active agents leaving. We're going to see that. So let me just touch on one thing here because you brought up a very key point. I hear about a lot of people leaving the marketplace. I think we all know during, during COVID, there, there was a lot of people who didn't leave the marketplace. On average, we see about 10% you know, over the last 40 years, 10% in, 10% out a year, maybe 11% in, 10% out because it kind of keeps growing every year. But, but the, my rule of thumb is 10% in, 10% out every year. Um, and, uh, and we had a little bit of a huge run up during COVID. Um, uh, and what happens is, uh, people who normally retired during COVID, um, or left the business didn't because the phone rang and they could put a stake in the ground and sell a house in a second. Uh, so what we're finding now is there are a lot of people, especially with the changes in the buyer agency relationship, um, and commission structures coming out that, they're, they're like, you know what, I, I think I'm, I'm just done. And they are finally retiring and they are finally moving on. And some of, like you said, some of these uh, in, inactive or non-active agents have decided like, yeah, I think I'm probably going to let it go. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're into real estate licensing, because as those people go out, brokerages, a lot of them, you know, they make their money off of agents. And, um, and what we saw from, you know, 2008 to 2016 was, the profitability per agent was cut in half in most brokerages. So what did they do? They hired twice as many agents, brought them on <laughs> so that they could be profitable again uh, at the same level. Um, so there's going to be some pressure for people to refill. So support those relationships with those brokerages that you know recruit regularly um, and forge new relationships with those brokerages that you know uh, want to grow. Um, and, uh, and I think because people leave, there will be a vacuum and there will be room for people coming in who want a career in real estate. Um, and so for us, that's important. Uh, and for you, I think that's that's where I would be targeting myself also. Okay. Anything else, Sarah? No, I think that's Any other oh, questions? Yes. Oh, that's the last word. I told you I was going to share my, my oh, yeah, image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I like I said, I try to build this PowerPoint using AI as much as possible. I was not successful in images. It is very dependent on the prompts and the platform that you're using. Um, I got a kick out of some of the images that that AI um, tried to tried to send along when I was building this PowerPoint. So um, anyway, just one last word. Just be careful on your prompts for your images. You might not get exactly what you had in mind. <laughs> Uh, right on. Well, it's a work in progress and we'll all become much better at it, I'm sure. And we'll be inundated with these kind of images for a long time. But uh, Sarah, I want to sure. say thank you. Thank you for, you know, bringing your smarts and sharing your knowledge uh, with all of our lovely uh, uh, Dearborn partners. And um, we can't uh, thank you enough. And we're looking forward to Jose uh, in September. I think we got a lot of interest people chatting in the chat right now. Um, and by the way, everybody, the uh, video for this uh, webinar uh, will be available within a couple of days. It'll be emailed to all of everybody who registered and um, you can watch it in its full and any future one will also be recorded for you guys. And you can uh, take a look at those in recording. 
And I just dropped that registration link in there one last time for the September webinar. Um, so grab it, grab it while you can. If not, we'll 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 send out emails, um, yeah. of course. So very good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Right. Uh, thank you, everyone.